Greetings and welcome back to Too Many Johnnies Creative Blueprints Collaboration Day. Today I am working on another panel and I will be starting doing the whole process. Enjoy. Starting with mid. And I will do. I did this one a little bit backwards. I started with the characters and then I went to the background. And then I also realized that I had the background, the living room flipped or something, so I had to go back and redo the background and reflip it to the consistency of the actual stage the scene is taking place on. But yeah, so enjoy the process and I will catch in later with you guys. Okay, moving on to old, and I realized that I mirrored the whole thing, that's what it was. So, I have to redo, I pretty much flipped the whole scene, which is not too hard these days on computer. So, lucky enough for that, digitally, I don't have to redo it all over again like when I was a kid. But mind you, if you don't have digital, here's a couple tricks that I used when I was a kid because I didn't have one of those light tables either for tracing. Either I would just draw on tracing paper until I had a copy that I really, really liked. I don't know if tracing paper is still made these days or not. Um, if not, I honestly would just tape it up in a window, my bedroom window, and use that as a drafting table. If I didn't have daylight, because um, in Canada, especially in winter time, we don't have as much daylight cycle. So, um, but uh, my parents did have a side table that kind of had a little glass section in it. So I would just take my bedroom lamp and stick it under that and make a drafting table. And then as I got older, I had a glass coffee table, so I would just stick a lamp under that and use that as a drafting table. Um, these days too, though, on Amazon, there's some small desk ones that are about the size of some tablets that you can get that are small drafting tables that are pretty decent prices. But if you still can't budget that, like I said, just get yourself a cheap light, flashlight, something, a way to prop it up underneath either a glass table if you have a glass table or just tape it up in your window and then just save the sketching times and stuff for the times where you don't have sunlight and then the tracing times when you do when you're cleaning up your own work if you don't have digital and you can flip the page your whole paper if you need to flip the whole scene like how I had to flip the whole scene for this panel <laughs> but yeah I uh, will let you guys continue watching the time lapse um, once I'm done, finished, old, I will be going into lit. Lit only has their head in their hand, so it's not too much. And then, yeah, I'll probably catch up with you guys after I'm done lit.
to kind of lose a bit of consistency, but I think it's one of those things where I'm going to have to leave it. I don't know. I feel like I lost consistency because, like, I kind of did have 2D, 3D, but not really. And then the other ones, I kind of flushed them out just a little bit more. Like, especially the rocking chair added a little more depth to it. So I don't know if I will go back and add depth or if I will just leave it as is because it was supposed to be simple and I am already adding more details than the simplicity that was supposed to be there with the original um, pictures that I had gotten from John for referring to um, the reference of the old style that he was looking for so yeah um, but uh, just do up the background and let you guys watch oh one thing the coffee table as you've seen there I did extend those lines longer I do that sometimes when I'm trying to block in a quick perspective where yeah it may not be the best perspective but it's just me trying to block it in and visually seeing it if I'm a little confused on the angles. So I'll extend them a little bit longer. And after this, I will do flats and then I will catch up with you guys at the end. Kind of usual for me now, I'm gonna stick with doing the background flats and the props and then move on to the characters. I do it this way so I can just layer them over top of each other and then it just kind of makes the flow a lot easier. jumping in between the pen tool and the pencil tool. I've been finding that I kind of been enjoying the pen tool for a lot of the props and stuff more so and I think it's because it's more simplified at least with this project the props that I'm doing so I feel like that's why I may like it a little bit better but yeah just wanted to comment on that I've been jumping in between the two tools. up in the front here I am gonna go into a little bit of foreground midground background as the basic three planes of field um, if I said that right so kind of doing the grayscale within that and having the stuff that's more in the foreground darker and then just kind of go a little bit 
darker with the characters, and then just keep the background with the light colors that I usually have it to keep emphasis on that and the lettering. But yeah, sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. Because it depends on the scene, the angle where the camera is, and yeah. And in this case, I put the camera kind of as if it was the wall looking at them, <laughs> so. to start with the skin tone so I can bring that over top of the background and then I'll just work my way through all of them and I'll let you guys watch the time lapse and I will catch up with you at the end of that. you guys joining me today on this journey and I hope that the week treats you all well. And always remember, clear your history if you're using this program and save our snapshot. Don't want to lose your progress. That's a wrap.